Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at downloading PhantomJS as well as running a simple program that will test if PhantomJS has been installed properly. So to get started, go to the webpage phantomjs.org and there you'll see a big download button. Just hit that and it'll take you to the download page. You'll see there's versions for Windows, uh, Mac, as well as Linux. If you go to the side and hit the quick start tab, it'll take you to this page where it'll show you a simple example to get started with PhantomJS, just printing out hello world to the console. This will let us know that everything with PhantomJS has been installed and that it's running properly. So let's go back to our downloads page. And I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hit download for OS X. Just let it download. And then it went into my downloads folder. There's the zip file. Let's open that up. And then in, inside that zip file, there'll be a bin file. And then there's inside there is the phantom.js executable file. This is the file that you need to run phantom.js. I have already, I already have a phantom.js folder in my downloads folder called phantom.js. All I did was rename the phantom.js 2.1.1 Mac OS to just phantom.js. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete these. The next step is to add a path variable so that we can run the phantom.js executable file from anywhere on our computer. We're going to be doing this through terminal. So go to your terminal window. So inside your terminal window, type cd, then slash etc. Press enter, and now type ls, and this will show you all the files that are in your etc file. So we're looking for a paths file. So to edit this path file, type sudo nano paths and hit enter and you'll be prompted for your password. These are all the paths that I have. I've already created a path for phantom.js, which just is the direct path from the root directory all the way to the phantom.js executable file. If you have your phantom.js folder inside your downloads, it'll be your path that you'll be adding is the same as mine, minus the name change for your Mac. So to save this, go Control O, and then press Enter, and then Control X to exit. And there we go. We added the path. But for in order to, for that in order for that change to take effect, we have to restart terminal. So just close it, and make sure you quit it as well and then open up a new terminal window and and that path variable should be saved now. So now we're going to head over to Atom where I have already opened our phantom.js folder and inside there you can see there's a bin file which contains our phantom.js executable file. So now I'm going to create a hello.js file inside the phantom.js folder and it's right there. So now I'm going to type some JavaScript in, in this file. I'm going to type console.log, hello, and then phantom.exit. This phantom.exit line of code is very important. When phantom.js runs this hello.js file, which will print out hello, but then it will know what to do next. You need to tell phantom.js to exit at this point. So now if we go back to our terminal window and we navigate to where this hello.js file is located. In our case, it's in the downloads folder. So we'll just go change directory, downloads, and then we'll also, and inside downloads, we have our phantom.js, so let's change directory to that one. And then you can see our hello.js files there. So now to run this hello.js file, we need to type phantom.js space and then hello.js. So when we added the path file in the beginning, that was so that we could just write phantom.js and then the file name. Otherwise, we would have had to type the full path name every single time we wanted to run the phantom.js executable file, which can be very time consuming. So instead, we added the path variable. So now if we run that, you can see it printed out hello, which is just what we wanted. If we go back into Atom and we change 
hit from hello to hello world, and then try it again. You can see it printed out hello world. So in the next video, we'll look at using PhantomJS to navigate to a web page and take a screenshot of it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.